Okay, this is my video focusing on the Ford Model A Zenith carburetor and my focus today is going to be on uh, detecting leaks and helping you troubleshoot to find leaks and also setting the proper uh, fuel level in the bowl of the carburetor and I get a feeling this video may be a little bit long so I better get going quick uh, I shortcutted all the instructions and steps about how to take it out of your car, how to disassemble it. Uh, as far as taking apart the Zenith carburetor and parts, it's really easy. It's very basic. Uh, the hard part is the adjustments and inspections and the other tiny stuff. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the top, I'm going to focus first on... Um, the float level. So let me focus on the top of the carburetor here first. Put this aside. We'll get to the bottom part. Okay, so for where to start for leaks? Let's start with the fuel coming in. So the fuel line comes in here and there's uh, a valve here where the fuel comes into the carburetor. Oh, sorry. Got to keep doing it. Let me back out a second. All right, a little better. Fuel comes in here. It comes through this underneath here that is float valve because the float touches there. I'll, t I'll show you that. And there's a little ball here that when the float is, here's the float. When the Model A float is floating in the gas in the carburetor and it's pushing up against that little ball, it should, if properly sealed, shut off the gas flow. There's a few ways you can test for that leak. Uh, one is, if this is on tight, you can actually blow through here. Uh, if you're worried about um, hygiene or cleanliness. So the good news is bacteria doesn't grow on gasoline-soaked parts, but doesn't taste very good, right? So you can, you can wipe this down with like an alcohol swab or just... I mean, you're not going to like breathe on, you're not giving it mouth to mouth. You're just pushing air or you can take, you can take the float valve out and this has a washer. All of the jets and valves in the carburetor have a washer except for one. Um, I'll get back to this, but this is the idle jet, which goes into the top part of the carburetor. It goes here just screws in there and it doesn't have a washer it's a tapered fit so when it's in there you don't need a washer in fact if you try to put a washer on there it may leak so you don't need one for that so you can also blow in here so you can clean this off you know again it's just you know and you don't have to like you just lightly put pressure on it you don't like have to jam it right because the pressure from this floating gas is only, it's not like, you know, it's not like a hundred pounds. So it's just very lightly, but firmly, you know, you basically push here and blow and I've already done it. I'm not going to videotape myself doing that, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't leak. So this ball seems to seal up properly against here. If not, you got to clean this out. You can clean it with a carburetor choke cleaner. You can clean it with a, lacquer thin there's there's many chemicals or ways you can do to clean this out if you need to so anyway that's one place to check for leaks and also make sure your wash is on there and that covers the float valve now i mentioned earlier this float right so another place you can have like leaks which affect the performance of your carburetor is the float itself may leak it may have holes in it so over time it's all brass construction, it's soft material, and you may get pinholes in here over time, rust, just maybe just being not handled properly. Um, one big no-no, <laughs> we'll talk about adjusting, we'll talk about adjusting the fuel level in your carburetor, but to get this uh, level proper, one thing you don't want to do is never use a screwdriver to pry up this handle this mount point here to adjust it that's like a big like you'll have just don't do that trust me on that one anyway to test if this leaks or not um 
One is you can just try to shake it. If, if you don't hear any liquid in there, you know, gas, that's good. But another way is uh, if you have like a pot, you can boil water on the stove top, secure this down with like a string or some kind of weight, like put this under water in hot water and let it sit for about half a minute or so. And if you don't see any air bubbles coming through the water, then it's probably okay. That test is basically heating up this float and the hot air expands inside of it. If there's a leak, you'll see tiny little bubbles come out if you had it in hot water, underwater. That's a way you can test for the float. Part of sealing this uh, float valve properly is you need the surface area flat. So do you see here where it touches? I cleaned it up so it looks nice. But make sure this is flat. Uh, I mean, I don't think you need to sand it there, but if somebody previously has been trying to like use pliers or a screwdriver to bend, like if this is bent or anything, you may just have to toss it and get a new one. So make sure the surface contact here is flat and smooth. Otherwise, you may not get a very good contact and seal and you get a leak here on your float valve. Okay, so we covered that. Uh, what else? Test for leaks. Oh. Adjusting. So earlier I said, you know, how do you adjust? Oh, so let's talk about, I'll get to the float here. What level should the gas be in your Zenith carburetor? So pretty much everything I read is um, 5 eighths, 5 eighths to 9 sixteenths, but in that range, definitely not beyond 9 sixteenths. And the way you measure that is from, they say the gasket top. So like when this gasket is on, but from the bottom, not the top casting, but the bottom casting. But from here, down, the level should be in there. And what I did was I already marked, I got a ruler, right? So from this one inch mark here, I measured down 5 16th and that's right here. So that's the range I want to stay in. So what you would do is you fill it up with gas. Uh, probably do this outside or someplace where if you spill gas, um, it's not going to cause a problem. And let me get this close here. So I get that, what you would do is you get that right on the bottom, the edge, the top edge of this bottom casting. And right there would be 5 8. So that's the level you want. But you can't see through your carburetor. You're not Superman. So how can you see inside there and set the proper level? Well, there's a handy little tool the Model A uh, shops sell, the Model A parts stores. And it's a clear tube and it has a little wire inside that's pretty nifty that helps. And this end screws into the bottom here where you'd normally have, do you see one of the, the valves in there? There would normally be, this is where you normally drain the carburetor. If it's sitting in your car and you, you know, you unscrew this, it would drain the gas. Well, this is a fitting that's been modified. I don't know if you could make that on your own. It'd be kind of a, I guess if you're good with metal work, you could drill it out and make something. But anyway, it just screws in like this. It's got a washer also. So you just screw it. I'm not going to screw it all the way. So when that's screwed in all the way and you fill up gas, and it's got this little wire in here, so that's cool because the wire, you can bend it. What you do is, and when this on the float here, when this is all assembled, what you would do is you fill it up with gas and you got this little, uh, here, probably hold it with your hand. I, I don't have two hands, but you hold it like that. And as you fill it up with gas, you'll see the gas come up in the clear hose and you'll see it come to a level when the float is all. So you'll get to that level and this is where you'll bring your measuring stick, your little ruler, and you'll check it right next to this tube. Uh, I'll try to do this when I got it mounted on the Model A later, but you'll check the level and you want to get it to 5 eighths. So if it's uh, higher than 5 eighths, you got to bring the float level down. If it's lower than 5 eighths, you got to bring it up. And again, you got between 5 eighths to 9 sixteenths. Try to stay 5 eighths if you can. Um, okay, so how do you adjust that float going up and down inside? So let's get back over here.
put this guy aside. The way you adjust it is you're going to adjust it by the float valve. You're going to use shims or other additional gaskets to adjust this up or down. So when this is all the way in properly tightened and you're measuring your gas and if measuring your gas and if your float is set to if it if it rises and shuts off the gas when it's too low you're not going to have enough gas in the bottom if it's the other way where the float rises where the float rises too high before it shuts off the gas you're going to have too much gas so you want it in that 5 eighths, not really too much above too much below just so you know if uh, I told you this would be a long video right um, if you're gas in this bottom uh, like here so so in there is where the gas comes in these are these other jets the cap jet and the main jet I'll get to those in a sec so this gas in this bowl here if it's too uh, so let's let's say that's your measure right there if the gas is too high it's going to potentially um, cause problems with uh, uh, if you stop real fast you have, you have this problem too like in your model A's, if you stop real fast and the engine just dies you flooded it out that could be what happens if your float level is not correct it's letting too much fuel you got too much gas in your bowl it's over that 5 8 limit and it's sloshing around too much in there um, also you may get a drip Back here so I'll talk about another leak here so if your gas levels too if the float in your carburetor is, is letting too much gas in it'll also spill over into here possibly and there's a little hole down here if you ever look this tiny little hole in the bottom of your carburetor um, that's not a vent hole you got a plenty of air intake here where the the, the choke throttle plate is so this is actually where if gas is spilling over into here leaking it comes out this little hole and you can see this in here I got a little where's my wire hold on a second so if I take a very thin little wire and put that in there and then we look down the throttle the air intake here do you see uh, Come on, is it? Come on, cooperate with me here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Get back. All right, sorry, this is taking way too long. All right, now you can see it, I think. So, do you see that wire going in and out? Okay, anyway, what will happen is if the gas, if you got leaks going into here or it's overflowed too much in here, the gas will run down into that hole down here and what will happen is it will drip but it may run back so this gas may run along here and come out here and so what happens it could be misleading where if you had uh, let me take this off here if you got your original all right kind of a mess all right put that there if you got this plug here this basically uh, not on the end why is it during videos everything goes okay so if that was on there tight and it's in your model a and I've had this happen it happens by all of this like you'll see a drip here if you got that leak and it looks like it's dripping from here and you're like oh that gasket is not working and I'll, we'll, we'll test this later, but um, but really where that, and you try it, and it's like you try to, and if you over, you could damage the threads if you're trying to, over, you don't have to really over tighten anything on the Zenith carb. Uh, anything from the, ga, the, the needle adjusting, like all this stuff, you don't have to really over tighten anything on the carburetor. But what happens is that little dot, like gas drips there and drips to here, and then it comes down. And sometimes when you're looking like this in your car you can't see underneath here very well and so that's just a little tip as you're troubleshooting leaks like see if you're leaking here you can just dry it off use a flashlight use something to see if that's if your drip is coming from here your leak is not this nut or washer here what's happening is you're leaking 
somewhere in here, which could be again from a bad float uh, valve level. Sorry, bad, yeah, bad float level. All right, so to adjust this properly, oh, and what happens if you don't have enough gas in here? It could, your car could run lean, I guess, and runs hot, and that gives you a whole other set of problems. You can adjust this up and down. That's how you basically adjust the float is you adjust the float valve. And the way you adjust it is you either put more washers in if you want to lower it or take washers out if you want it to go up. And there's this really neat kit you can get from the Model A suppliers. Uh, it's a shim kit and it's got different thicknesses. And if you don't have one of these or you have an old one, you can always take you know, one that you have or something a similar size and to make it thinner, just put it on a piece of sandpaper and just rub it flat on a flat surface and that'll thin it down a bit if you need to get a thin one. And if you need a thicker one, just put, you know, a second one on here. So this kit has different size shims, which are, you know, different size washers, which will let you adjust. And the way you do it is it'll be a little, little bit tedious, but like, you know, You'll put a shim on, you'll take it off, then you screw this back in all the way, then you'll assemble the float in here, then you'll put this back together like this, fill up some gas in it, uh, and then uh, if it's all attached to your Model A, what you can do is just turn the, valve, the gas valve on from the uh, firewall, like, and the fuel will go in here, it'll fill up and stop, and then you'll have this attached at the bottom and you'll measure the fuel level again from the, bo the bottom, not the top, the bottom casing like right there at the very edge of the bottom casing mark 5 eighths on a ruler or something so you can see it easily and you just keep adjusting that way it'll like go up or, and you'll get it finally at that 5 eighths level or between 5 eighths and 9 sixteenths and then you'll have the proper fuel level in your carburetor Okay, so that was that. Um, what am I going to do next? So one other, I went over testing that. I got a list, sorry, because I don't forget. <laughs> um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'll take a break in a sec. I'm going to test these jets here. Now, these jets can leak at the bottom if you don't have the right gasket in there, if you have no gasket, or if your gasket is old. And these jets are very, these gaskets are tiny, if I look, if I don't drop this. That's a tiny little gasket. And again, you can buy a gasket kit at your Model A parts here. And this is just, you know, a variety of assortment of different gas. The tiny ones are for your jets. And one way to test this, as well as the gas adjustment valve, the needle housing here, this is the needle like the, oh, let me get to that in a sec, is you can fill up gas in here up to that like 5 eighths level we talked about. Then you let it sit. And you let it sit for a while, like a few hours. I may let it sit overnight. I'm going to put mine in a container in case it leaks. So I'm going to put it in a container and I'm going to put it outside because I'm not going to like don't... <laughs> Don't let this sit for a while uncovered in your garage. You don't want to have fuel filling up fumes in your garage. It's not safe. But what I'll do is I'll put gas in here. And some may, uh, I've read somewhere like you can test things with water instead of gas. And that won't damage anything. You can just dry it. But I'm doing gasoline because A, I got plenty of gasoline. But B, um, I want to see how it uh, performs under real world scenarios and gasoline is definitely a different liquid viscosity and whatever than a uh, water and so I want to test it with actual gasoline because that's how it's going to run so that's why I'm not choosing to do water but you could I think if you wanted to use water here instead so you'll fill this up with gas in this bowl here and then as you let it sit you're going to look in here at your main jet and cap jet and see, you're going to check for any leaks. And you probably need a flashlight if you're going to do this. And you'll look in there at the bottom. If you see any weeping or whatever, it's leaking, right? And just to show you where that little hole is, if I put the flashlight this way, see that, uh, see that little hole in the bottom? That's, that's this hole right here. So if these jets are leaking, you're going to see it you know, potentially drip down here as well. Um, 
I recommend getting, um, you can get at one of those jets with a, um, the one top here, like a, this is like a 5 16th. But it's tough, right? You could, it's tough to get at this. You got to take this other jet out from the bottom, the main jet, I think, and uh, it's tight quarters. What I recommend instead you invest in, if you're going to like do any kind of work on your uh, Zenith carburetor, again, at the Model A stores, you can buy a specific Zenith carburetor, this little tube wrench here. It's very long and narrow so that it fits over the jets, and you can get right, to, and it's got two sizes. There's one size here, I think, is this the five, um, the five sixteenths? And the other side is like some other like odd size, which is hard. But these slip over even on the idle jet here, like on this. You can see where it just slides over. That's too big. If it just slides over, like there, that's a good fit. Do you see? So this will let you take out that jet, which is it. I'll let go there. And then this jet down here, what you can do is like this. This just goes straight down, and like I can feel it there. It's it's in there now, tight, but uh, and I want them tight for the test. But this is definitely worth investing in. It's like tw like twelve bucks. It's not even that expensive. If you're taking out the jets in your Zenith carburetor, just buy one of those. It's a lot easier. Um, you also we're gonna part of that test is now. Notice here's something. Yeah, this video is going a long time. Sorry. Uh, notice that fuel level when it's five eighths at the proper setting, if I were to like mark my thumb like right there, now let's go horizontally across, right? Now, what do you notice here, right? Let's look at that needle housing there, that brass needle housing right here, right there I'm looking at. Guess what? At the proper fuel level in the bowl, this guy will be underwater, right? Under, under, under gas, sorry. He'll be submerged. How do I know that? Well, look, right, do you see this little bend right in here, and there's a passageway in this bottom casting here. So right in, uh, bad lighting. There's a hole right there. You have to, oh, there it is. Trust me. Well, and right here you can obviously see this comes down where the needle goes down in here and into the bowl. Well, this could potentially, we're going to check for leaks here too. So in addition to these jets, by letting the bowl sit in gasoline for a while, I'm going to test if there's leaking around here too. Now, I've had problems with different carburetors of it leaking here. Um, there's a variety of reasons why that is. Uh, technically, this is a tapered fit. You shouldn't need any gasket or additional sealant here. But the reality is, depending on the condition of your carburetor, the housing, um, you may, and it just comes out right here. So again, I'm not going to get into like how this works and everything, but. Down in here, this could be over the years just not sealing properly. So one thing you could do if this is leaking is you could wrap it with you need any gasket. You shouldn't need any uh, tape around the threads. But it's an old car, right? 90-year-old parts. So the threads in the carburetor, like, it may leak, right? And so... If you have to put tape on here, and there are some people that object to this, but uh, some people say you shouldn't put tape at all here. If you're going to put tape, and I don't have it on here, but I may, we'll see. Um, at least use a tape or Teflon tape that's resistant to petroleum, resistant to gas. Don't use plumber's tape here, like that white tape. Uh, it'll deteriorate with gas exposure over time. And that deterioration, like this is... One of the reasons people don't like, it's a sensitive jet, right? So like if you get crud down in here uh, and block things that like that's, that's going to cause even more problems. So you'd like to avoid putting tape on these threads altogether. But if it's leaking there and you try to clean up the threads and you're just not having any luck, try, you could try to get some tape that's gasoline resistant to help it. Because when the gas is in the carburetor, at the right level, this will be submerged a bit and gas could just leak out of here. And this needle thread here is typically, you know, it's inside the cab of your model. You twist that uh, gas adjusting valve, the GAV uh, knob, and you can simulate it like this. If you have like a small little flathead screwdriver and like, for example, I could, uh, I could unscrew like this and you can see it slowly. 
see how that's coming out. So that's adjusting the needle out and then you just screw it back in. Okay, next steps, I'm going to fill it up with gas and check for leaks, so that's next. Okay, I am outside leak testing the bottom bowl casting of my Zenith carburetor for the Ford Model A. Uh, here's everything you'll need. So I had to prop it up level, but allow this uh, indicator tube to sit low and curve. So I propped it up on two. Uh, those are two paint sticks. And you will need your ruler that's marked to measure 5 eighths below uh, where the gasket goes here. Uh, oh, shit. Well, I won't touch that. Uh, this is an old turkey baster, so if you have to take a little fuel out, something to suck fuel out, you'll need fuel to put in. And so, uh, and I got a level because uh, it's mostly level, but it'll be, you know, it's difficult to balance it on these little wooden sticks. So it's a two hand job, definitely. Um, and what I did was, as I kept going back and forth and again you just you know you put the ruler here you got it pre-marked and then I would hold with the other hand I would just basically hold that indicator tube there and get it it's it's right about it's just slightly over 5 eighths which for the leak test is fine but when I'm doing the final adjustment when it's bolted on the Model A I need to make sure that that is uh, precisely 5 eighths so what I'm gonna do is let this sit I'll take this off that's what it looks like with 5 eighths gas, so pretty filled up in the bowl. I'm going to check for leaks there on those jets and also check for leaks here where this needle uh, housing is. And hopefully I come back in an hour or so, a few hours, and it's not leaking. Again, I recommend you do this outside for safety. Okay, it's been about an hour, almost an hour until I last uh, filled up the bowl here with gas to check for leaks. When I first came out, so everything looks dry, so if you look in here at the cap jet and main jet, it's dry, you see that little tiny hole towards the back of the choke plate is dry, so it looked good in here, and it looked good here where that needle housing uh, screws in, but then I was looking and uh, the bowl looked a little bit lower, but in my catch container below here is dry. So I thought I was maybe leaking gas out of the bowl, but what's happening is I'm outside. I think this gas is actually evaporating and it's not that hot out here. I mean, it's still morning time. It will be hot today. Uh, I live in a really hot climate, but it's only about 85 out right now and it's in the shade, but when I uh, measured, I looked at the this indicator here. Uh, it's definitely below, like when I had it at 5.8, it's definitely below that. So I'm getting evaporation of gas in the bowl, like quite a bit. So I want to test the leak at this 5.8 below the bottom, you know, the gasket here. So what I'm going to do is uh, fill it back up again, but then I'm also going to put the top of the carburetor on and hopefully that will reduce the evaporation because I'd like to, to sit for at least uh, a couple of hours at that level and not have it evaporate. So that's what I'll do next and then I'll give you an update. Okay, my second check on the carburetor, it sat for about another hour again and while the fuel level is better when I had the top on, so when I put the top on, I got less evaporation, but I'm still getting evaporation. So when I hold the, again, I use two hands, but when I check the level in the bowl, it's still going below uh, 5 eighths. So, but again, I look in here, looks dry. That's good. The needle housing dry. So those are the areas I was mainly testing for. So what I'm going to do one last time is I'm just going to fill it. I'm going to overfill it a bit because I know it's evaporating and just check it one last time. I may not record that last time, but so this will probably wrap up my video. So this is how you can test 
for leaks in your carburetor for these uh, cap jet, main jet, and this needle housing. And just to show you, oh, I don't have my, uh, I can't. Um, just to show you that the fuel does go up here. Maybe I'll do one more video. I'll, uh, I'll put this on a mount and use two hands and unscrew this with a wrench. And you'll see the fuel come out just to show you like the fuel level is, you know, covering here. So let me do that real quick. Okay, and this last part here, I'm just going to unscrew the needle housing and show you how the fuel level does cover the bottom here. Um, real quick, there's two sizes I've seen. Uh, this is a 7 16 which works on this needle housing. I've also had another, another carburetor, had another needle housing which wasn't 7 16 It was some kind of off size or a not a common size. So I just took an old wrench. This is a, a, a 10 millimeter. And I just filed, <laughs> I just filed it down or grinded it down so that it would fit around here. But I don't know why there's two different uh, wrench sizes on this. But anyway, this 7 16th works here. So watch as I unscrew this. I'm trying to go around the camera. So as I unscrew this, what you should see is uh, gas starting to come out. And sure enough, can you see that on the, up oh, blurry, anyway you can see as I take it out, uh, the, you can see the gas dripping down in that catch container there. So sure enough, the fuel does come up a bit on your needle housing. And so when you're checking for leaks, you want to again screw this all the way in. Make sure the threads are good. Make sure you clean out in the bottom there. And as you can see, I let it sit for like an hour or so. And uh, no drops, no leak, just using threads only. There's no gasket on here and no tape. So you can get this to seal, but if it's not working for you, you may have to buy. And, and these aren't that uh, expensive. These needle, I don't, like, I don't know, like they're not, they're not dirt cheap, but they're not expensive. So anyway, I hope this uh, video, this long video about troubleshooting leaks in your Zenith Model A carburetor has been helpful.